Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. Of course, I'm starting here at the Reptarium, going through my stuff and we spend a lot of time here, but the truth is, you guys know we run BHB. BHB is a big part of my life as well and we've hung on to some pretty banger snakes that we're raising up that will be breeding here, whether it's next year or the following year, whatever the case is. So I thought we'd head over to BHB and just take a look at some of these animals that we're raising up that are absolute rippers. And there are so many colubrids that we're raising up and pythons for that matter. I love these guys because again, and they're a jet black snake, but these are actually the African house snakes. So these aren't Mexican black kings. These aren't the black milk snakes. These are actually black house snakes from Africa. And they're really cool. They still have that black shiny thing. Uh, they don't get quite as big as Mexican black kings, but they're high production animals. These guys should be ready next year and they're beautiful. We have some of these bamboo rat snakes that are getting raised up. These are actually an Indonesian rat snake called Porphyracea. And they're really beautiful. I mean, with the red and kind of cryptic patterning, they need a little bit higher humidity a little bit cooler temperatures but uh, definitely pretty cool animals and again high production just like the black house snakes we have some gray banded king snakes that are in hibernation and brumation right now that should produce this year but of course we have some more coming up that will be ready next year gray banded king snakes are just unbelievably wonderful west texas snakes well, some of the coolest naturally occurring snakes in all of america if you ask me definitely very cool and excited to be producing these. Raising up some pretty cool carpet pythons this year. Of course, this is a jungle jag that's just absolutely ripper. We also have some just normal jungle carpets that are coming up uh, and even some albinos. I'll show you an albino baby that we're raising up right now that's pretty cool. So definitely cool. And these things are just, they're crazy. I mean, they're just so beautiful. And carpet pythons have always had a soft spot in my heart. So I'm excited to get these guys up and produce them. I've always been a big fan of the true red tail boas. Of course, this is the Guiana a red tail boas so we're raising up a few of these but they take a while to get up you know usually I want to take five maybe even six years to raise them this guy's about two years old now and has a ways to go but uh, absolutely beautiful snakes no doubt about it just a little bit more cryptic a little bit more sharp and the colors are a little bit more poppy than the normal Colombian boas and then of course we have some Suriname red tail boas which are even brighter color than the Guianids they're typically a little bit more tan they don't have that like lavender hue in their body but their patterns are super Super good and look at the tail on that thing the tails on Surinams and Peruvians are probably the brightest of the tails or I should say the darkest red of the tails. so can't wait till these guys get going and these guys will get eight nine even ten foot so they're gonna be amazing one day I have a feeling they're gonna make it over to Reptarium 3.0 of course after having a really good year of ball python production we hung on to quite a few animals this year this one is actually a super pastel lesser leopard clown ball python and I just love the fact that the pattern is so phantomy looking it's absolutely beautiful and you can see his little head poking out right here how beautiful that is almost patternless I mean really beautiful can't wait till this guy gets up to breed next year and then this of course is a banana leopard clown ball python just look at the fluorescence on that that thing is just glowing again another male that'll be up to size next year I always talk about if you just have the right combination of patterns and colors they look amazing and this one absolutely does just literally a lesser leopard clown ball python I mean it is three genes there's no doubt about it but it's not that difficult to make and man I tell you what, it's one of my favorite ball pythons that we produced last year these are actually what they call theri or Nuevo Leonis milk snakes sometimes called variable king snakes so they have a bunch of different names nevertheless really variable this is actually what they would call a milk snake phase there's actually buckskin phase there's melanistic jack black ones and then there's tangerine ones as well this would just be a typical kind of higher orange milk snake phase theri you guys know I love hognose snakes and these have to be pastel pink albinos we have a bunch of different hognose snakes raising up I really want to work on that group a lot more over the next couple years we used to have amazing amounts of hognose snakes and when we downsized several years ago we kind of reduced that colony and now I'm trying to upsize it the pastel pinks are certainly one of my favorites another hognose snake that we're raising up is a nice group of these tri-colored hognose snakes these guys are incredible again not related to the North American ones but still nevertheless have that little pug nose but again tri-color I always say it looks like you crossed a Pueblo milk snake with a Western hog nose. They're really cool and I cannot wait till they're up to size next year to start producing. And this is actually that albino carpet python I talked about earlier. It's just a really pretty high yellow one so we decided to hang on to it because we have a Darwin's next door at the Reptarium that has a lot of white in it so I figured I'd go the opposite way and get one that's really kind of almost patternless and it's an absolute ripper. Of course we've got my lonely female Sabu python that I'm raising up from last year. I had mentioned that I wanted to raise a 
bunch of these. We hatched 12 of them last year, but I ended up only hanging on to one female and it's starting to get a lot of the dark blotching, that octogenic color change that's gonna turn almost like a brownish gray color when it gets older. But the good news is, is our adult female looks like she is about to ovulate and we're gonna get some more babies hopefully this year. And then this time I'm definitely gonna hang on to more. I am so excited about the Lori Ball Python project. I can't even express. And hopefully this year we'll have some really cool stuff. But last year we produced some cool things like this, banana, Lori, Cinny, that is just unbelievable. I mean, just really crisp pattern, got the purple coming through. So definitely the Lori project, watch out guys, it's coming and it's gonna be pretty hard. Then of course there is the Super Lori Leopard Ball Python that just kind of has blown everyone away and certainly blown me away. And as they're getting bigger, they're getting really interesting looking. So we have a trio of these coming up and then we have a chance to produce more. The female that produced these, bred to the same male last year, is getting close. She's starting to grow some follicles. So hopefully we'll have some more Super Lori Leopards in our future. Genetically, this one is an absolute ripper. This is a Banana Lesser Enchi Bongo that is het for clown. I mean, can you imagine what kind of clown combinations we can produce with those genes? Gonna be really cool when this one gets up to breed. Of course, each year we raise up the next generation of the coral snow corn snakes. That high pink, unbelievable animal. So these are some of the ones that are coming up that'll be ready for next year. Uh, again, we'll have some beautiful babies produced this year, but these guys are the next generation. They're just gonna get better each and every time we breed them. These have always been one of my favorite mutations of milk snakes. This is actually the T-positive Nelson's milk snake. So again, tyrosine positive. That gives it that kind of purple and grayish hue. Just love these guys. And they're allelic to albino, meaning that if you breed these to a normal albino, the ones that are red, white, and yellow, actually half the babies come out like this and half the babies come out albino. So definitely a cool animal. So we're raising up a bunch more of these just because I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And you guys know we're always gonna raise up a bunch of different corn snakes. This isn't a really unusual corn snake in the sense that it's been around for a long, long time, but it is a triple recessive, which is a ghost striped corn snake. So it's aneuthristic, it's hypomelanistic, and it's striped corn, which are all recessive traits. So just raising up some more of this type of stuff because, you know, why not? They're pretty cool. Another corn snake that we're raising up is actually one of the, what they call a fire scaleless, which is just basically a hypo scaleless albino. Just really nice orange, red colors flaming through. Really beautiful animals. And again, scaleless corn snakes are definitely way up there on my favorites list. There's no doubt about that. And we have a ton of really cool ones. This is what they would call a super reverse Oka tea corn snake. Now, Oka tea corn snakes and reverse Oka tea corn snakes have been being produced for a long time. And the reverse is just basically an albino is basically what it is. So an albino Oka tea corn snake. But this is what they call the super version, which is polygenically bred to just reduce the pattern even more. And I tell you, I love these guys. They are absolutely unbelievable. I've been working with Samboas since I was literally like 17 years old. And to be honest with you, we have a couple Samboas that are like 25, 27 years old now. So we're gonna raise up some more here. We've got just some normal high orange ones. And then of course an aneuthristic that's raising up and whoo, almost got me there in the face. That's all right though. They are a little bit cranky, but they're absolutely wonderful. So these guys will be up to size probably in another year. Of course, we raised up the entire mystery ball python clutch. You guys may remember last year, I think we had five or six babies and they were all different, all weird looking. So we raised them all up. This is just one of them here. Have no idea what's gonna happen in the future with this project, but at least next year when a male gets up to size, we can breed them just to some normals, just to kind of start unravel the mystery of what genes are making all of these weird combos that don't seem to make any sense. Another clown ball python that we're hanging on to is this one here, and I love it. This is actually a banana enchi Mojave clown ball python. Just an absolute ripper. Love it to death. I can't wait till it gets up to size as a boy. So next year it should easily be able to breed. I'm gonna have a lot of really cool clown stuff up to size next year. I've been mentioning that I think that the black and white cow kings may be one of the next big things in colubrids, just simply from the fact that the contrast is so beautiful. You know, I kind of called it on the Mexican black kings a few years ago. And I think these guys are the next ones up. Cause I mean, look at that, just black and white. This happens to be a black and white striped animal that has a lot of white in the sides too. So we're raising up a nice group of different, you know, high white, black and white, striped black and white, 50-50 black and white, stuff like that. Because like I said, I think that this is gonna be an extremely popular snake. Not that it isn't already, but I think the popularity is only gonna grow as more and more people see how amazing they are. And yeah, that little black and white cow king that was so cute and so beautiful, it decided it was gonna take a little munch on me. This little thing just loves to eat, you know? And right now it's literally coiling both of, well, actually all three of my fingers. And it really believes that it's gonna be able to eat my fingers. And uh, yeah, they have a bunch of little tiny teeth. It doesn't hurt too bad at this size, to be honest with you. But yeah, uh, this little monkey is uh, it's pretty crazy. I'm gonna see if I can't get it off my finger. Just gonna try to unwind it. 
Oh, there it goes. Nice to have my finger back. And although the albino high white, black and white Cal Kings don't have the contrast of the black, they're still absolutely gorgeous with that white color and a little bit of that purplish pink kind of bleeding through. This happens to be like a 95% high white albino black and white Cal King. And uh, we have a little group of these coming up. They're pretty rad. Another corn snake that I absolutely have fallen in love with, of course, are the palmetto corn snakes. I always say they're like miniature cow reticulated pythons, right? But they're born with the pattern from the day one. They don't get it as they get older. But what a cool snake this is right here. And again, they come pretty variable. I mean, some have more black, some have more red, some have more yellow, but they always have these kind of cool blotching on it. It's a recessive mutation and uh, it's pretty cool. So this year we might actually produce our very first palmettos, but we did raise up a group from last year as well so that these will be ready maybe in a year or two. This is actually that Suma ball python, which is a super mahogany, but it's also het for piebald ball python. So it's really what I considered to be like the blackest of the ball pythons, you know, because they're super sinnies, they're super black pastels, but the super mahoganies or what they call suma seem to be the best. They don't have the deformities and the fact that it's a het pied, hopefully we can get some panda pied-ish type of things, but not like a panda pied with a sinny or a black pastel because there's usually kinking issues there. So hopefully the suma pied stuff will actually come out black and white and look beautiful. I love the way this animal turned out. This is actually a fire sinny cypress yellow belly. So it's just all those genes together make that cool racing stripe down its back and just a really beautiful animal. Don't know exactly where I'm going to go with this project, but uh, it's definitely cool enough to where I'm raising it up and uh, I'll figure something out when it's ready to breed. So excited to have a sunset back in the collection. Of course, my buddy Brian Cusco is the one that sent to me. This is actually a cine sunset, so it's a boy. It should be ready to breed next year and I can take it to some of my het females and hopefully next year finally start producing sunsets again because uh, obviously it's been a long road, but it's an absolute ripper and I love this project. I can't wait to to see what happens in the future. You guys know we're raising up a bunch of mangrove snakes for sure. These are the Melanota actually, but uh, we have a bunch of different Boega. You guys know that we just got some of the Sienna, the Gemacincta, and of course this little monkey here. Woohoo! I tell you what, woohoo! My gosh, this guy's a pistol, little, little pistol. It's okay, little monkey. It's all right. Of course, rear fang venomous, but we won't get bit in the face right now today. Wow, this thing is a little pistol, little machine gun. What is wrong, little buddy? That is pretty awesome. I tell you what, that's a beautiful snake. And like I said, I think we're raising up about 20 of these that we produced. This thing is crazy. I'm going to put it back. And you guys may remember when I picked up these albino wolf snakes or diadons. I mean, they are absolutely incredible. This is the only pair of albinos in the country. And we also picked up a pair of hypos too. So they're probably a couple years away from production. But I tell you what, these things are stunning. Then take a look at these here. These are actually the super red Dion's rat snakes. I love these guys. And these are those ones that I had talked about in the past that they literally hatch in like 12 to 14 days after laying. Uh, I I can't wait till these get to adulthood. It's probably gonna be another year and a half or so, but producing these guys will definitely be something cool. It's species I've never produced before, never worked with before, and I think they're absolutely stunning. This is actually a year and a half old female that we held back. This is a spinner, which is a spider and a pinstripe, but it is a red stripe, and it's a super stripe, which is a specter and a yellow belly. So there's a lot of genes going on, and it wasn't quite ready to breed this year, but next year should certainly be up to size. And I love that red stripe stuff, and I love the way it mixes with the super stripe. So uh, gonna be some pretty cool Cool possibilities from this one next year. This is one of my new projects that we proved out last year to be incomplete dominant. Well, we haven't proved it out to have a super yet, but next year, hopefully we can actually prove it out to be a super. Don't know what it's gonna be because it's just super orange, super light, super interesting. So uh, we're still trying to figure it out, but I'm pretty excited about the future. And next year we should be able to prove out if there's a super. Just a really super clean animal here. This is actually a banana and she leopard ball python. And this is actually a girl, which is pretty cool. So she's got a little bit of growing to do, but man, I tell you, she is beautiful. These of course are the pied musarana rat snakes. I love these snakes. When they get bigger, they're just black and white. Beautiful contrast. They get pretty sizable too. You know, they can get six, seven foot long. So they're a pretty sizable snake. So they're doing really well. We got a group of them here and uh, they're starting to grow up and looking amazing. And here is actually the super pies. That's right. This are the ones that have like 90% White, just a little blotch on his back and then the head pattern. Again, gonna turn solid black as it gets older as well. So you're gonna have white with just a black head and a kind of cool patch on it. Unbelievably cool animals. So again, the Moosarana rats have been something that have been in my wishes for many years and finally to get some pies and super pies are pretty awesome. This is actually the albino San Diego Applegate's gopher snake. And uh, it's pretty cool. A guy named Robert Applegate is the one that actually founded these guys. And as they get bigger, the white turns really purplish look 
looking. Really beautiful. Used to be considered one of the prettiest albinos. Now there's so many other albinos out there. It's hard to say which one are prettiest. But for many years, the albino San Diego gophers from Applegate were considered the nicest albino. I still think they're absolutely beautiful, but no doubt there's a lot of other cool ones out there now too. Produced this last year, it's actually a pastel lesser leopard clown ball python, but it has that black paradoxing blotch on it too. Now this is a girl, so she has a little bit of growing to do, but I think by next year we'll be able to breed her. And again, like I've been mentioning, we have a lot of clown stuff coming up, so I'm excited about next year and just to see how it all goes, kind of combining all this stuff. This is when it starts to get fun. And then the final animal I'm gonna show you, and trust me, I have a ton more that I haven't showed you. We could have probably spent three hours doing this, no problem. It's just a pretty simple animal, but I just love the way it looks. This is a female super banana ball python. And just the amount of like little purple coming through, lots of whites, the yellows, how they mix together. I love this girl. So as you can see, we have a lot of cool stuff that's coming up. And like I mentioned, we probably touched on maybe 10% of it to be totally honest with you. So uh, still crushing it at BHP, still loving it over here. And I figured this would be a nice break from the Reptarium to show you what's going on on this side of the fence. So there it is, guys. That's a lot of razor snakes. And like I said, we only showed a little bit. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite and uh, what you think I should get next because uh, I'm always looking for something else to add. But BHB is definitely going to have some fun times ahead. There's no doubt about that. If you could do me a favor, right over here is a playlist. If you could hit just one video, two would even be better. It really helps my channel a tremendous amount. You can also subscribe to my podcast channel right up in here. On this side, we are 45,000 subscribers away from 3 million. Can you hit that subscription button, turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.